tuned in to the Community Cats Podcast. Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Community Cats Podcast. I'm your host, Stacey LeBaron. I've been involved helping homeless cats for over 20 years with the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society. The goal of this podcast is to expose you to amazing people who are improving the lives of cats. I hope these interviews will help you learn how you can turn your passion for cats into action. And today we're speaking with KJ McGlynn. KJ is your kitty correspondent who has dedicated her life to learning and teaching others how to create a deeper bond with an understanding of our cat companions. Her first word as a baby was kitty and her words in her memoir, Raised by Cats, Behind the Mic and the Muse will encourage and inspire you to strengthen your own communication with your feline friend. KJ not only shares positive stories of cats in the nationally syndicated Pet Pals TV and uh, KJ Today Show, but also has a background as a Reiki master working specifically with feline energy and a long history of working in animal communication that makes this look at understanding cats unique and eye-opening. KJ resides in Indianapolis with her husband and house of cats that currently includes seven rescues. She is part of Indie Neighborhood Cats, Cat Team, and the marketing director for Grateful Rescue and Sanctuary. Her storms and melodies, calming remedies have helped create stress-free environments for both rescue cats and cats in homes across the country. KJ, I'd like to welcome you to the show. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here with you, a fellow cat lover. (laughs) For sure, for sure. So KJ, you got to tell us, how did you become passionate about cats? Yes. Well, uh, as you just said, my first word was kitty. It is documented in my baby book. And uh, my mother would say, if she was still here, that if I was going to say kitty before mama, at least I made a career out of it and went on to be the kitty correspondent. So it was a pretty immediate bond for me. And I tell people I didn't, um, I wasn't born with all of this knowledge of cats, I was born with a natural love of cats that made me seek out the knowledge and the understanding. Uh, I started growing up it, on a farm in Wisconsin where we had barn cats. I had an incident when I was five years old where one of our barn cats had actually gotten caught in a trap. She drug herself back to our house. And I found her as a little five-year-old crying, begging my mom to save her. And she moved into our house as a three-legged cat, broke the rules that my dad had had about uh, how there were no cats in the house. And from uh, there on, there have always been cats in my house. (laughs) Oh, wow. So a passionate advocate at the age of five. That's fantastic. So I'm going to also ask you, how did you become passionate about TNR, Trap, Neuter, and Return? I started out on the radio here in Indianapolis. I've had a a long career in radio, and I started behind the scenes. And again, I'm still volunteering with with shelters here and there. And when I, I, I got placed on the air, I didn't ask to be on the air. And my director of programming said... Uh, you're really good at being on the air and that's your job now. So figure out how you can like it. And so I decided to use this microphone to do good for cats. And I started having a rescue organizations, TNR organizations, anybody that was doing anything to help cats. I was having on my show, we were doing a monthly segment called KJ Strays, where we would feature cats who needed to be adopted. And I, I, I just found myself immersed in the community and having that, that background of coming from barn cats who, you know, on farm life where they weren't fixed. We didn't think about spay and neuter. We needed to have 30 or 40 cats on the farm. And I was a little girl. I didn't know where they came from. So I hadn't really thought about that as a child. And it got me thinking living in a city, uh, what a difference we can make if we simply spay and neuter our cats. And, and I started sharing that message with my family who was still living in rural Wisconsin. Like, I get that you need cats on the farm, but do you understand what a difference you could make if you got them fixed and then 
adopted some barn cats who need homes. And from there, uh, spreading the message with my family and friends, I just continued to uh, to spread the word and help however I could with the uh, trap neuter release and the spay and neuter messaging. So how many years ago was that? How long have you been a believer, we'll say? I would say it was about, gosh, probably, oh, Stacy, probably 20 years ago. <laughs> time, time is flying. <laughs> You are a veteran, a veteran uh, TNR supporter. Yes. And we, you know, 20 years ago, it was really different. You had to definitely explain it more to people and and make them understand. And, you know, we've made such a difference with TNR now that I appreciate the conversations are, are a little deeper and helping people understand the community cats part of it and and why we're releasing them. Uh, I, I I tell people in my book, in my consultations that I do with cat owners, uh, a, a safe cat is a happy cat. And that includes our community cats. They don't always want to be, uh, you know, they don't want you to rescue them and put them in the shelter. We need those places for cats that need to be rehomed. Those community cats they're safe and happy on the streets. We just need to fix them so that we don't have so many and make sure that we give them the, the care that they need. But we have to honor the cat's wishes. And even though we think as humans, every cat should be inside and we should love them, we have to honor the community cat who wants to be outside and have a safe, happy life there. Do you ever provide folks with advice or guidance or tips on how to determine whether a cat that is trapped or kittens that are trapped should be brought in or should be TNR'd? Do you ever deal with that type of a conversation? Uh, I I do. I have a, a lot of people come to me because, you know, they, they see me as the kitty correspondent on Pet Pals TV or they've read my book, Raised by Cats. Um, they follow me on social media. So I, I get a lot of questions and and. I am very fortunate that I have had uh, the honor of, of getting to know some amazing TNR uh, advocates here in Indianapolis that I know who to send them to. You know, I, I think the big thing is uh, the biggest question I get is, you know, I found kittens. What do I do? And getting that message out of like, oh, my gosh, please don't touch them. Right. Like leave them there. Mama might be back. Let's start with getting a professional involved, a volunteer who knows what to do, you know, making sure that we um, aren't taking kittens away from a mom that's just out doing her job, which is, you know, hunting and getting her own food and staying a, a distance away so those kittens can be safe. So um, that is the, the the biggest thing that I run into with people is is the kitten question and what do I do with kittens and and actually Stacy and I don't know if you've heard this uh it, it was it was new to me uh here probably earlier uh uh in the spring uh, the, the the last spring season uh Don Benefield who's the executive director of Indie Neighborhood Cats came to me and said we've got to get this out this is the best tip to help people who don't know what to do when they found kittens and it's encouraging people, if you found kittens, to just get some flour out of your, your kitchen, just regular flour, and sprinkle a little circle around them, and then wait to see if there's paw prints. Because if there's paw prints, I get our community cats program involved to figure out when it's best to get mom fixed, whether or not we're taking those kittens to be socialized and get moved to an organization who adopts out cats. So I loved, absolutely love that um, because I think people who don't know how to handle coming across kittens, you don't have to love cats to all of a sudden one day find that there are kittens under your porch. What's an easy thing to do? Wait and let's see if mama's coming back and let's take that time to get the right people involved, the people who can trap and make those decisions. No, that's a great, simple, simple tip, but very effective and, and powerful and, and can certainly save lives by doing that. So that that's a great, great tip. 
Um, you mentioned Indie Neighborhood Cats. Uh, it sounds like this is an organization that you have been um, involved with or volunteered with on and off over the years, as well as another organization, Grateful Rescue and Sanctuary. Can you just share a few more details about those groups that you've worked with? Absolutely. Uh, Indy Neighborhood Cats has been around for about eight years. So um, doing some really, really great work and still uh, still a lot to do in, here at Indy. But we do have, uh, we have a lot of cats on, on the streets. And I, I'm sure, Stacey, that uh, talking with the community that, that you do on a regular basis, we're all seeing that difficult um, overflow, that effect of the pandemic and not being able to spay and neuter. And it's it's hitting us really, really hard. And we're still catching up from that. Uh, Indie Neighborhood Cats is, it, it's, it started out as, as just volunteers who were passionate and it has built into uh, a, a 501c. And what I love about Indie Neighborhood Cats is that the first thing they did was make the connections that we needed to work together. So Indie Humane and our animal care services and reaching out to the rescues and shelters and saying, we're a resource. We want to stay in our lane. We want a TNR. We want to take care of the community cats, manage the colonies, get the food to people who are managing the colonies. You stay in your lane and do what you got, you've got to do to rehome the cats that you already have. Um, and so they're they're very, very passionate about this is this is what we do, and we're working to solve the problem of too many cats by being the TNR organization and doing what we can do to help take that burden away from the uh, rescues and, and the shelters and really making a difference in having that um, those relationships built to where uh, the humane societies, the rescues can say when someone calls them, we don't do that. You found a cat. We don't do that, but Indy neighborhood cats can. And so it's a really great system that we've developed here in Indianapolis. I'm really proud of the people who worked hard to build that community cats program. And then Grateful Rescue and Sanctuary is already operating as a rescue. And the sanctuary, once it is finished and built in uh, Muncie, Indiana, it will be the biggest sanctuary on uh, this side of the the Mississippi River, or the biggest sanctuary in the Midwest, and their goal also is to help ease that burden. And so they will often work with Indy neighborhood cats hand in hand when they have found kittens or they have found a cat that is not meant to be TNR'd to work with Grateful Rescue and Sanctuary and figuring out where we can get them to be fostered and get rehomed. So um, I really enjoy working with both organizations because they do see the overall picture of we have community cats that we respect that belong out in our neighborhoods and they serve a purpose and they bring joy. And then we have cats that need to be at homes and working together to figure out which is which and how we can support each other, even though we're different organizations. Yeah. And that's very challenging. It's not easy to determine sometimes whether a cat should stay outside or should be brought in. There are so many other factors at play, the environment, uh, the support system, availability of resources. So there's just a lot of different questions around that, and it's very case by case. But I think that it sounds like you have a whole team of different organizations in the area that are able to handle the needs of, of every particular scenario that might come about. So I think that that's fantastic and that as, an, as a group of organizations, uh, there's some collaborative efforts there, which is also fantastic. So I applaud in uh, Indianapolis and the area for working together and collaborating because I, I think it's much better when there are a variety of different groups working together than one group sort of owning one territory because you're trying to be too many things to too many different people, families and their cats. And in, its, in some cases, it is helpful when it's a variety of different organizations working together. Absolutely. And, you know, being here for 20 years, I've, I've been able to see the progress to where we are. And obviously, we still have plenty to do, but a lot more gets done when we work together for a common goal, which is 
to make sure that the cats that need to be in homes stay in homes and the cats that serve our neighborhood and want to be outside are healthy and we reduce the number so that all of us are working together and not having such a burden. Do you want to make things easier on yourself and the others in your organization? Our friends at Dubert have teamed up with the Dallas Pets Alive and Spay Neuter Network teams, and together they have created the Companion Case Management Module. It allows you to be more proactive with all your organization's needs, create cases for your clients, and organize them by type. Whether it is a rehoming situation, a pet parent needing food or medical assistance, or simply spay and neuter inquiries, CCM can help you manage all of them right from the Dubert system. Plus, a huge bonus, it allows you to connect with those clients right from the case so there is no need to open up new windows for emails or pull out your phone for text messages. Check it out and learn more at www.dubert.com to get started today. Ever wanted to quickly connect, collaborate, or problem solve with others in the animal welfare field who are, you know, real people? Look no further than Maddie's Pet Forum. Maddie's Pet Forum brings people of animal welfare together with the common goal to keep more people and pets together. We share ideas, expertise, offer each other support, resources, and more. Visit forum.maddiespetforum.org slash cats. Maddie's Pet Forum. Come for an answer. Stay for the community. So KJ, you mentioned a little bit about the veterinary appointment or the spay-neuter appointment shortage uh, that we've experienced sort of throughout the pandemic period. Sounds like those challenges that were faced around the country were also faced in your area. How are things going at this point in time with regards to spay-neuter capacity for organizations? You know, I it's improving. I don't think it's improving as as quickly as we like. I think it's just gonna it, it's just going to take a lot of time. There was a lot of time that we missed, and we know how quickly cats can make more cats. Mm-hmm. And so, I I definitely think that we're seeing some improvement here in in Indianapolis. I think our our biggest challenge is continuing to serve the person who has found a cat and wants to help and is trying to do it on their own because they're not getting into a low cost clinic because all of those appointments are just taken. So how do we help that person not get discouraged? How do we offer them services or, you know, help them get through until we can get that cat spayed and neutered. Um, one of our wonderful programs here that serves the entire entire state of Indiana is Pet Friendly Services of Indiana. And it's the, the simplest thing. Uh, we raise money for them by having pet friendly license plates. And every year, $40 when you renew your license plate goes to helping Pet Friendly Services of Indiana and they're able to get the vouchers out. So they have been working with more vet offices and figuring out across the state, like if we can get these vouchers in people's hands and you have a free appointment, can you help us take the burden off of the the, the clinics, the low cost clinics that are so overwhelmed? Uh, so it's been really nice to see even some of our vet offices who we know are overwhelmed saying, yes, let it, we understand the need and we'll, we'll take the vouchers. So that has been very helpful here in Indiana in, in figuring out how we get through this crisis until things normalize a little bit and it's not as hard to get an appointment. Tell me a little bit about your TV show. Who do you have on the show? What, what are the topics that you cover? So I am the kitty correspondent for Pet Pals TV. Pet Pals TV is a TV show that runs in 26 markets across the United States and streams online. And all of our stories are positive stories, pet ownership, experiences uh, with pets, the way that they positively impact our lives. And my job is specifically to speak out, uh, seek out those stories about cats. So I often find myself in interesting situations. Uh, I was at a 
at a wedding where there is a cat who coordinates the weddings. He mm-hmm. comes to the barn and and makes an appearance and makes sure that everybody that's getting married there knows that he's in charge of the place. I really get to do some very cool stories about uh, cats that are unique and sharing those unique qualities that people don't understand because I'm I'm very passionate about the fact that I, I feel like while we've come a long way, uh, when we started our companionship with cats, we really took a lot for granted and made assumptions about them that weren't true. They're not aloof. They're, you know, not standoffish. They don't pee outside of the box because they're mad at us. They pee outside of the box because they've understood how to communicate with us and they're telling us something is wrong. It's so important that people understand those things. So I have the honor of of sharing not only positive stories, but educational stories that hopefully help keep cats in homes. That's fantastic. That's so great. And you've written a book. You have a book that's come out. Tell us a little bit about that too. I do. Raised by Cats, Behind the Mic and the Meows is a uh, book about my story with cats that will help you have a better story with your cats. So from the time that I was a baby and loving cats through this journey that, you know, you and I have talked about today, uh, barn cats to uh, having my own cat, which I, my first one out of college, uh, Reggie, I I refer to as the practice cat and often publicly apologize to him that I had to learn so much Mm -hmm. about cat ownership with him. Uh, but it, it, you know, it addresses a lot of issues that I myself have had. So from aggression to finding harmony in a multi-cat household to grief to the unexpected medical uh, concerns that can pop up with cats. And because I, along the way, became so curious about how to help cats, I went on a journey of uh, understanding acupuncture and holistic methods with cats. And I became a Reiki master because I became fascinated with the energy work that was being done for my cats that I wanted to be able to do it. So it's a it's a unique and interesting look at understanding cats, not only from the information that we have uh, derived from some of our wonderful vets and cat behavior specialists who are working every day to really, really help people understand cats to this journey of of holistic care and some of the incredible animal communication that has come from some really reputable communicators that have saved lives, including uh, my, my cat, Omar, who I was told one day while I was on the radio from a pet communicator that I thought was just going to be a funny, entertaining little bit that I needed to get him to the vet because his head hurt. And sure enough, I got him into the vet. I felt like the craziest person saying, you know, what brought you here today? Well, a pet communicator told me on the radio that my cat's uh, having headaches and I I don't know what to do about that. And he ended up having high blood pressure, just extremely high blood pressure, put him on some medication and he lived uh, another 10 years. So, um, it's been a, a, an incredible journey of learning from so many people and learning from so many amazing cats in my life that I wanted to share it. And hopefully my story can help your story of cat ownership or cat relationships be a little bit better because I think sometimes we just need a little help understanding them. That's incredibly fascinating. And you know, you're talking about understanding your cat, listening to your cat. Um, with the Reiki. There's also been a lot in the news or in the animal welfare space about compassion fatigue, emotional burnout, really a lot of negative energy. Are you feeling that in the work that that you're doing or in the the contacts that you're seeing uh, that people are just very emotionally exhausted at this time? Very much so. And We talk about that a lot. I have a a Facebook group called KJ's Cat Club, which uh, everyone is welcome to join. It's a safe place to ask questions, uh, bring up concerns, and and talk about some of this. And in working with my clients and 
understanding how Reiki works, which I tell people if they've never experienced any kind of energy healing, if a hug has ever made you feel better, you've experienced energy healing. Uh, the, the reason that that a hug feels better is because there's an exchange of energy that helps you feel better. And that's really what Reiki is doing. Um, but if we have if we have a cat in the house and we're talking about, you know, a safe cat is a happy cat. Well, if your energy is depleted or it is bouncing up and down or you're stressed, you're angry, these cats are, they're feeling it. And so then it becomes this vicious cycle of they're getting stressed and they're acting out and they're feeling it. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm already so stressed. And now my cat's peeing outside the box. And it's like, we, we have to take a second to step back and get the energy in our home to be as balanced as possible so that not only are we feeling better and are we uh, replenished, but that we're not projecting this onto not only our cats, but any of our pets, because they really, really do absorb that and react to to the environment that we put them in. So if we're stressed, they're going to be stressed. And it, 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 we lean on them so much to be our companions and make us feel better. But it's really important that we we reciprocate that. Yeah, I hope we come out of this time stronger but i feel that right now there's going to be a long journey of healing in the community before we can feel re-energized and optimistic and positive are you positive about what things look like though for community cats in the next three to five years you know we've had a lot of setbacks because of the pandemic clearly but i am positive that we as a, a community who are passionate about community cats, no matter how fatigued we've, we've gotten, we, we know that we're going to overcome this. And I still think we're making progress. If nothing else, through all of this, I, I think what, like what you're saying, we're all tired. We're all burnt out. We all have this fatigue. But at the same time, because we understand where that's coming from, we also have a we actually do have a little more compassion for each other. When someone says, I can't come to work today, my cat's sick, that's something that 10, 20 years ago, maybe even five years ago, you weren't necessarily going to get a lot of compassion for that. And now um, I think that the workplace mindset has changed to life first, understanding, compassion. It's 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 getting there. And I think even though we're tired right now and it's hard to see our way out of it and for people working in the world of community cats to see more and more kittens right now and more and more need from the people we serve can be exhausting. But Part of it is because we're educating people and they know to reach out to us and they have compassion and they want to help. So we have to hang on to that while we go through this time, because the more educated people are, even though it can be more of a burden for us, the more educated they are, the further along we're going to get in solving the problems that we want to solve by doing our TNR and taking care of our community cats. I agree with you 100 percent on that. So, KJ, if there are folks that are interested in checking out your book or finding out more about the work that you do, how would they do that? I I keep everything all on my website so that you can find me if you want to get my book, Raised by Cats, Behind the Mic and the Meows, if you want to see where Pet Pals TV is uh, in, in your neck of the woods so that you can watch the show, uh, or if you want to follow along with my, my social media, which is full of my seven rescue cats and their amazing stories. Uh, it's kjtodayshow.com. That's kjtodayshow.com. And is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners today? Just thank you for being a cat lover, for sharing in this conversation, and for wanting to make the world a little better for our cats. KJ, I want to thank you so much for being a guest on the show, and I hope we'll have you on again in the future. I look forward to it. That's it for this week. Please head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. We love to hear what you think, and a five-star review really helps others find the show. 
You can also join the conversation with listeners, cat caretakers, and me on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to hit follow or subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss a single show. Thanks for listening, and thank you for everything that you do to help create a safe and healthy world for cats. Wow.